it's just different. Hopeless at one point and they have an opportunity to make you go harder, make you get in that booth and just really express that hopelessness. Like, man, y'all don't understand. This is like, you know what I mean? You dig from a different place. That, that bottom of your soul, that pit, on me where, where, where you felt like the shit was... Shit, in your mind it ain't gon' happen, shit, it probably won't I took some risks, some people probably won't That's how we're grateful for the fruits of all my labor Hard to live and know you sick, I'd rather be with my creator Think the time's up Alright everybody, welcome back to Foreign Sight Podcast I am your host, Mike Ovi And it's your boy, London Overtree, back here for some more gems Alright, London, what's going on, man? What's up, man, how you been? Not bad, can't complain, just another day trying to you know, bring some entertainment and some gems and open these conversations up for the people, man. What's going on in your end? Some more entertainment and gems. That's what we do. Um, I've been pretty good, man. I've just been so occupied with trying to just figure out more more things we can talk about and discuss because I think we've been off to a good, good start with the last two episodes uh, dealing with these topics that a lot of people have kind of reached out to us and just came to us and kind of talked about doing it more. So got to keep pushing that gas and keep going. No, most definitely. You know, it's, it's crazy, um, you know, being in the gym and meeting people out in public or just getting reached out to on social media and people are like, hey, I listen to your show. You guys are actually good. You guys have something good going and keep it up. Right. And so that's what we're going to try to do. But this week, man, we're going to delve a little deeper into some of the subject matter that we've touched on these first two weeks. But, you know, what, what we're all about here is just when we see problems, we just try to bring them to light. We analyze them and then we try to come up with solutions. Right. We're very solution solution oriented with this platform, I think, with our partnership. One thing that I seem to notice and one thing that gets talked about when I have conversations with men and women is it just seems like there seems to be this war between single men and single women. And so much of the narrative is, well, who is to blame, right? Is it men to blame? Is it women to blame? Just on that aspect alone, what do you think about that when you hear that? Um, I don't think you want to just kind of target everything and just say it's men or women or men and women. But mm-hmm. I mean, if I had to, I definitely think there's something to blame for this happening. And if I had to pinpoint it out, I'll, I'll definitely emphasize it on social media and just kind of what I touched point on in like episode two, you know, I don't want to go too in depth with that, but just, I definitely think social media plays that part of just, you have that image in your head of this relationship is this, this relationship is that I want it. So they, they set their minds to be that. And when they don't get that, they kind of just, it just goes down the hill. So I think that's who's the blame. I don't think you can say it's men or women. I think it's a both of us, but I think social media makes that make men and women not be able to communicate and actually be realistic with things. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think that it's, it's very difficult for rigid men and women to see eye to eye these days. And then with social media kind of, you know, compounding the issues or, you know, taking everything and, you know, just saying, well, this side is wrong because of this or because I don't agree with it, because I don't like the way something is said, the way something is presented, it's automatically false, right? Or, you know, I see a lot of people cutting off their hand despite their face. I think that's the term, right? Where like they that. might not, they might not, they they may agree with the way something is said, but they right. may not like the tone in which it was presented to them right you know like yeah. i might i might like the fact that or you might tell me something and i might know deep down that it's correct right like for example you tell me yo if you want to slim down get on that dang stairmaster and do it for 30 minutes right right otherwise you're not gonna lose no weight i might know that deep down that that's correct but just my tone and the way i yeah. kind of approached it and that's what i struggle with tremendously because Speaking of the girls and men, like I've got numerous times from women, like, mm-hmm. like you, what you're saying is correct. It's about how you word it or how you like approach it. And I'm like, I don't know, no other way, but being raw cut because like, maybe I could have sugarcoated it and be like, blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, you got to get this done. If you, if you're not succeeding in this, if you're not succeeding in that, Nothing is going to get that done, but you being focused and you being locked in. So I definitely struggle with being, um, like I said, sympathetic and not getting people's needs. So. 
<laughs> but I think this is why we have these conversations, you know, especially our dynamic. We're really good at, I think, at kind of bouncing each other back and forth. Or if we don't, like, we don't agree on everything, but the whole thing is, okay, well, did you see it this way? Or did, you know, I'm going to present it to you in this light and maybe you'll see it differently. I think people just need to have a little bit more open-mindedness in terms of their thought process. And honestly, for me, what it comes down to is, is the way you're acting, is the way you're thinking, you know, is your current method getting you the results you want at the end of the day? If it's not, then something has to change, right? Or you're going to keep on running into the same negative out outcome, right? So that's right. what it's all about for me. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's about if something's not working, it's it's changing, but it's it's hard for people to change their ways and continue to, it's easier for them just to keep doing the same stuff rather than taking somebody's advice and going a different route, so. All right. Well, what we're going to do, man, is just we're going to peel back some of the layers of, you know, you talked about social media and I agree that there's so much of what social media, you know, shows us and depicts and tells us about both complaints on the men and women's side. So we're going to kind of just open these questions up and see what we're what we might be able to kind of analyze and maybe we can kind of make some sense of all of this. The first thing I, I noticed the most and I, I noticed this in person and on social media is this kind of claim from women that men you know don't want to be men anymore you know chivalry is dead uh you know guys don't want to approach and be masculine or you know guys um don't want to pay for dates don't want to do things that old school you know traditional men would have done i kind of talked about right. this last week to that claim you say what or you think what i mean it, it's the reason why that's the way that it is is because a lot of women has been let down by men so many times mm -hmm. that they it's like a game. And it's like, if it's, it's only so much that a man can say to a woman to get a, uh, to get a woman. So it's like, if I'm using the same game as Quincy, Tom, John, whatever his name is, <laughs> and it's like, if I'm using that same game and that same method, she heard that before. And if that dude has used that same line that I use and that dude has hurt her, mm -hmm. she's not about to entertain it because she's going to say, I've been through that before. He's going to do this again. He's going to hurt me. But on the backside of it, this guy that's actually doing that same line might be authentic. He might be genuine. But coming from how I feel about it is I'm big on having that, uh, being respectful and being a gentleman. I don't mind paying for the first date. I mean, I don't like going on dates anymore on the first date only because I have several girlfriends who literally tell me, yeah, I'm going on this date just to get a free meal. And I know if that was me, I'm going to be pissed and I'm going to make you pay for your own stuff. Or I might just figure out how to finesse you and go to the bathroom. And I might just dip. So I'll do something like that. <laughs> I'm petty. But if I, if I figure out that you on that type of time, but it's like, I don't mind paying for the first day. I don't mind, um, a lot of women are kind of weirded out because I'm like, if I go to my truck and then they're coming in my truck, I open up their car door. Mm. And I kind of learned that from my homeboy, Blake, because he did that. I was like, dang, like, it's, it's not bad to be a gentleman or open up doors. Like, I don't, I mean, I don't think you need to push somebody into a seat no more. I mean, like, you're doing a lot at that point. But I do agree with opening doors, being a gentleman, but it, it comes with, it's women has to appreciate that. I also notice if you say thank you, and if you don't say thank you and I do stuff like that and you just be like, oh, that's mandatory. You need to be doing that. I will stop completely. So it's both sides. It's we have to learn how to be gentlemen. We have to learn how to stop playing women's minds and they have to learn how to kind of let people in and know they have to learn like, OK, this guy did this to me and this guy's going that same approach. But I'm going to give him a chance and hear him out. And he's being a gentleman. He's paying for these days. I'm not going to uh, fuck him over and just do this. So it's both sides. So it's, I agree with having that morals and values and being a gentleman. So mm. now I love kind of your breakdown and I agree with you. I think what I always say is my people is raised me right. I was raised right. right. I was right. raised to pay for the first dates, both by my dad, my brother, and my uncle. Every male figure in my life has taught me, yo, like this is what we do, right? right. Um, open doors, you know what I'm saying? Hold the doors for a woman, you know, um, all those little things. It's not a matter of me trying to simp or me trying to like, you know, trying to pander. It's just like, that's the way I was raised. That's what I know. So that's what I do, right? right? But at the same time, I also am a person, like you said, 
if you don't appreciate it, then those things get retracted. You know, it's very much like I reciprocate whatever I'm given, very right? Easy. So if a woman is very, you know, like thankful for, like I'm big on just little things like, hey, saying thank you or I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying you have to like buy me stuff or nothing. I'm not a materialistic person, but just show appreciation. Appreciation and that little big goes a long way for a guy you know i think right and then like you said it's just you know guys can't, it can't be this sort of leverage and like game right like it's just be a genuine interaction i think so much of you know social media has taught people to like play the leverage aspect of like well hey if you want to get this you have to do this if you want to yeah get you know intimacy from a female trying to keep it you know pg well you have to kind of hold off right women you have to get as many dates as you can from a man before you give him some it's like all right if you like i always say to women if you're not attracted to the dude don't waste your time don't waste his time right. you know going out with him guys if she's not you know reciprocating the energy you're trying to give her if she's not being receptive if she's trying to be flaky with you then why are you constantly trying to pursue a woman that doesn't want you it doesn't make sense you should go for the things that are attracted to you and that you attract and if it's not something that's you know in your ballpark what you think you deserve you have to look in the mirror first before you try to deflect it upon somebody else i think to me i think it's on men because i talk to so many men i'm like the way i got homies that play ball basketball <laughs> football and the way that they try to get women is i'm like this is terrible like i think women are at a point where okay that does work don't get me wrong in this generation that does work if you got the sort of uh so-called clout that mm -hmm. does work but after a while it's like not every girl knows what you do because i don't think every girl just be like oh he plays this he's a point guard he's a running back oh i know he plays for oklahoma state mm -hmm. so like i guess in their head they think everybody know who they are but i was give you an example i was at a um bar and i was with my homeboy he played at oklahoma state mm -hmm. and uh i don't want to air him out but like it just is what it is <laughs> it was like we pulled up to these women yeah. and we was talking to him and granted these women were very disrespectful that's why men don't pull up on women because yeah. they get this whole narrative like why is he talking to me and he kept trying to talk to him and he they kept ignoring him mm. and he's like do you know who i am i'm like, oh this is oh, shit. he's like do you know who i am and she was like no he was like i played for oklahoma state and she's like and i was like yeah shoot that's how i felt and yeah, and yeah. then uh so it was like it turned into, I was trying to get her to, he was like, they ain't even that cute anyway. I'm like, see, now they can't. To me, I wouldn't have did that. Like me, I'm a talker. So I just, I won't go up to a girl anyways. Cause I just know, like, I feel like I passed the size. I'm six foot, 250. Like they, they already looking at me crazy. So I'm not about to walk up to no girl anyways. But if I do get a chance to talk to women, mm -hmm. a lot of women are like, oh, you're different because we didn't expect you to just have a conversation with us. I'm like, who are y'all talking to? Like these men are just, jumping on y'all backs or something just trying to annoy y'all but it just depends i think we gotta get better as men because we lack um we lack communication because we always are behind the phone sliding in dms so going up to a woman that's like foreign like it's just so we gotta get better as men and as a whole in that aspect of it no, i agree with you i think guys gotta grow some nuts again and like pull up like if you're attracted to a woman and you think she's pretty like don't think too much about it and just like hey how you doing and do what you do but you know you you'll live better with yourself knowing you pulled up even if she rejects you like i think guys got to get over that fear of rejection too right like it's easy to be on tinder and swipe left swipe right and be behind a phone all day but do you really have the the true confidence about yourself i think a lot of guys fake confidence right like they don't really have that That's that true. like that are about themselves or like that belief in themselves to really like stand on their values, stand on their principles or know their worth. Right. That's the, that's the hot trend, right. Or the hot topic, but right, right. like women do because, you know, like guys are the ones who are supposed to approach them. If you look at a girl's, you know, social media DMs, like I've been shown them. I've like, this is the beauty about being the homie for so long is like you said, I've had so many homegirls like, bro, do you see how many guys have swiped right on me on Tinder? Like, <laughs> do you see how many guys are in my Instagram DM? So for me, I was already put on game about that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, 
dudes really be scared or, or I think they already have that preconceived notion like this girl already has, you know, X amount of dudes in her uh, DMs or, you know, in her phone. So why should I try? You know, it's exactly. Like, to me, that's true. Like, do you blame men for not walking up to women no more? I mean, because I'm not like I told you, like, I'm not afraid or I'm not not confident in myself. Mm-hmm. But for me personally, like it could be the mo- it could be a woman that's not as attractive as the next one. But there's some dudes out here asking for fifty dollars feet picks, this and this. So there's a million dude. There's a million dudes out here in these girls' phones. What's about to make you different from the next? And that's why I'm, my question is like, what do you blame them for not going up to women? Yeah, I do because in the end, it's always gonna it's gonna start and start it's gonna start and stop with us, right? Like so many guys talk about, well, I want a woman to respect me as leader of a relationship. You don't want to take the lead, right? Or like like you don't want to take the lead and pull up. That's that's first and foremost, as you said in the right. dynamic. You want the woman to pull up on you. That's a woman who's feminine, as we define it, is not going to more likely than not do that. She'll at least give you the signals. It's on you to act on it or not, right? If you think something is there, pull up. If you don't, then don't go on social media and talk about how every girl is standoffish or every girl plays games. That's my whole thing, right? I don't feel sorry for dudes. Who, I, yeah, I really don't. I don't feel sorry for dudes who don't have the nuts to pull up simply but then want to get on and talk about it or complain about it and ask why, oh, I don't have a girlfriend, I don't have this, I don't have that, right? That's one thing. And then on top of it, like you said, like just the culture of like, like that's the most ridiculous, nah, it's the most ridiculous thing from my aspect. Dudes really be out here asking for feet pics, spending money, sugar daddy in and shit. It's like, bruh, all right. And then you wonder why then, and then on the same token, those would be the main dudes saying women don't respect men. So it's like, oh, well, why would they if they know that they can profit that easily off of just giving you some little attention or just calling you handsome and then boom, you feel in the cash sap them and all that other shit. I mean, hey, and I don't blame and I don't blame the women. Last thing, I don't blame the women for doing that. Like make your bag by all means. It's just I just tell them to understand the risk of what they're doing when they decide to go down that path, because once you go down, it's hard to stop is all I say. And it's not it's not women's fault. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, but like to me, it's like, like I said, we're social media driven base now. Yes. It's like women hate when men ask for fifty dollar feet pics. <laughs> On the back end of it, you promote your OnlyFans. I'm not gonna stop the hustle. I'm not gonna stop Neil Bag. But not in my all. head, you got it. In my head, I'm gonna be honest. I'm always gonna be honest. If you to me, when you do the OnlyFans, I'm not saying you don't respect yourself, but it's just like, to me, there's other ways of making money. And always fast money ain't the best money. Mm-hmm. So it's like, that's going to always draw attention to people. So it's like, even like if I'm a guy, if I if I sit there and walk around in my in my drawers and my underwear and got my my print just out there, it's like, mm-hmm. that's going to draw attention. And if, if, if women like it, it's going to make them be like, oh, why are you doing that? Are you doing that? So the same thing is like having the only fans, this and this and this, that's making men come in there. Granted, we don't need to be sickos and weirdos to be like, I suck the fart out your butt or something like that. Like to me, that's, that's very, <laughs> that's very going overboard. Like I, I, the reason why I said that, cause I saw some girl post that on her story and I was like, yeah, you're doing, you're doing absolutely a lot. So it's it's like a 50 50 train for me. I don't I don't know. But yeah, I just think it's we all got to get better because. So that's that's the, that's the take home is that we all got to get better uh, since. OK, you brought up the OF stuff. <laughs> this is the thing. I This is the only thing I say. Fast money can come with slow problems. Every guy is going to say that. Right. But what I, I like, I attribute OF to a guy being a drug dealer and how he doesn't garner the same respect because he got his money the fast way or you know people will argue that that guy got it the wrong way quote unquote right it's the same thing for a woman who does only fans it's like yeah you got your bag but you no know, women and men will argue well did you do it the right way i don't i don't know whether it's right or wrong i'm just saying that's the argument that's going to be presented right mm-hmm. i'm all about okay for every action there's a consequence Right. So for people who want to do it the fast way, people who want to do it that way, 
you also have to be willing to uh, take the consequences with that. That's the only thing I tell or I warn people about. But by all means, make your money, make your bag. If you hungry, you starving and you, and you have a way to make money off of some dude who's willing to pay you for your content. <laughs> Yeah, they hey, made, who, they who made, am I to hate on you? You know what I'm saying? They made serious bread from it, but my, yeah, I'm seriously. You, what's what's to to you? What's the difference between OnlyFans and strippers? That is a good question. One's in person, one's in person, and one's online. Um, I really, that's that's really a good question, honestly. But they do meetups too on OnlyFans, so it's like it just depends on the stripping is so. See, that's why I said social media and things are that it just weighs everything down mm -hmm. as society we look at stripping as horrible but mm -hmm. only fans we look at it as just like oh that's just what this society of people do now but it's like to me it's in the same lane i don't care if you i don't look at a girl the way i used to tell my homes i don't look at a girl who uh strips or do only fans any different from a normal girl in my eyes because yeah um when you when you do strip and i'm not hating on them like you could be, I've met a lot of girls who do that who are actually very good women who mm -hmm. don't just throw it out there, but it's like they get that that image because that's what they do. Mm -hmm. And there's some girls who don't do that who will throw it out. I'm like, what's the difference between you and you and her? She just out here getting her bread for it. So it's like, I mean, to me, she's smart in my head. Yeah. But, I mean, it's all the way, I think it's the presentation of how right. those people go about it in the industry. Like right. you said, there are some women who are nice quality women and they just, that's the way they can make their money. Right. They decide right. to get out. Like some people generally need bread. Like I, I'm starving. I got to pay bills. Maybe I have a child. I right. have to do this dancing do, stuff. I have to do it. this entertainment yeah. stuff because it brings in good money. Yeah. Right. Same thing with OF. The only like, it's just unfortunate that that's some of the drawbacks. It's no different than a person who, has to go out and so drugs it's like you would rather someone not do it that way but when someone has a family you know and they have people relying on them we need food we need water we need housing by many means necessary but no um that's a good question like or that's a good thing you brought up it's like what is really the difference there are some people who would argue only fans is worse than stripping there are some people who would argue stripping is worse than only fans Right. I'm not here to say whether it's right or wrong or what's worse. I'm just like, we just acknowledge that those are two industries that, you know, fast money would possibly slow problems. All right. I agree. All right. Now we, we flip it. And the men's argument I hear a lot is that, you know, feminism and this independent woman movement that we have going on on social media um, has made women kind of, almost undateable, unmarriageable. What do you think about that assertion? Um, I think that comes from a weak-minded man personally, because I personally love an independent woman because it comes, it comes from how comfortable you are in your skin. And mm -hmm. most men aren't comfortable in their skin. Like for me personally, I'm very comfortable in my skin because mm -hmm. I know the work that I put in every day. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if, if my wife makes 250,000, I make 150,000. Is that really going to boot, like make me be like, Oh my God, like she's better than me. Like, cause in all honesty, I don't need you for nothing. Like I make 150,000 a year. I can do this by myself. But to me, I look at it. It's like my baby out here doing something, making 250, I'm making 150. We bringing in almost a half, half a million a year. So it's like, now we were able to go to, trips we're able to do things we're able to invest in rental properties or put our money together to me i just think of more entrepreneur things mm -hmm. so i don't want to i didn't grow up with a foundation and family of have the wife stay home and my mom and my dad works like i grew up in the household where two parents worked and my dad was like jackie we need you working like we don't need you staying home and my dad makes really good money but he just comes from that a uh, different type of cloth in Michigan is like we need both people working mm -hmm. and if if I go down you could pick up the slack if I, you go down I could pick up the slack so it's like I think it depends on the individual me personally I love when a woman can be independent but she's gonna know that I can bring that femin femin feminine side out of her because of who I am as an individual like I'm very um alpha i will say that like i'm very dominant so i'm a respectful human being but i'm always going to demand respect so if you if you're not being 
being the best that you can be, I'm going to let you know, and I'm going to pull that out of you. So it's going to make that feminine side come out because you're going to say, oh, this man, this man knows how to handle me. And then that that's how you got to learn a woman. Once you know how to handle a woman, a woman has no problem backing down and like showing that side to you. Cause like, oh, this, that turns them on. Honestly, if you can like get them in place and put them in position at something and teach them something they didn't know. So like I said, it depends on um, who that person is. Like, I would love to hear how you, cause we kind of think similar. So mm-hmm. I would love to hear how you kind of feel about those two. Now, most definitely. First off, what you said is absolutely correct. I love how you presented it just now. You yeah. got to think that's the blueprint of what guys have to get to thinking. Yeah. Right. But but before we get into that, I want to kind of um, delve a little deeper in some of the words and some of the things you just uh, analyzed. So first off, you said that you feel like you are alpha or at least you have alpha tendencies. Right. Right. There are some people who attribute that word in a negative connotation. Right. So just explain what do you mean when you say you are alpha or have alpha tendencies? What does that mean to you? Um, I'm very like when you for me, like if you if something and it's, it goes into so many different categories, like I'm not like an alpha light. When I say something, you be quiet. Not like that. It's like mm. the type of alpha that I bring is education teaching you about growth and teaching you about yourself. Cause I know a lot of women struggle from confidence and it's not that it's their fault. It's that society and parents, it could be whatever, knock them down. Women don't make as much as men. So what I'm going to do as your partner, I'm going to let you know that you can be King Tut. You can be, you can be Ellen. You can be Oprah. You can be anything you put your mind to, but it's you have to take those steps and take those trials and tribulations to get there. So me doing that, I'm giving you alpha tendencies and alpha traits to make you know that I got your back regardless of what you do. And by me doing that, that's going to make that woman be like, dang, he got my back so much. And then she's not going to have a problem kind of deferring to you sometimes and kind of listening to you and kind of stepping up when you like, this is the man of the house. He's going to make the, he's going to make a decision when we need to make decisions. And then when I need to make some decisions, I can come in too. So that's why you come into a partnership is like, Every both people can be alphas and both people can make decisions, but it's like when you need somebody to put your foot down, like if the kids, I'm like, I told you, I'm gonna go ask your mom. But if I need to come in here and say, No, babe, they're not going there, I'm gonna put my foot down. They're not going, I said they're not going, and that's just fine. I'm not about to sit here and argue with you, we can talk about that later. But that's what I mean, kind of by I bring that alpha tendencies. Like, it's just so many different categories I can go into with it. Uh, no, but that's that's a great breakdown. And the next thing. You talk about, which is something that I think you already kind of described that that's really just a weak individual, a weak male. But there are a lot of guys who would say that they don't want a woman who's trying to have a career. I think this is probably one of the biggest points of contention when I see men and women having conversations about dating and about career choices that, you know, there are many guys who said, I'd rather a woman who doesn't make a whole lot of money because that would then be uh, indicative of her mindset as far as her having alpha tendencies like you described, mm-hmm. right? But you're saying you you don't mind that. I would say that a lot of guys do. A lot of guys would rather the woman not work so much or not make so much income because that's usually indicative of a more feminine woman. To that, you say what? Because this is, yeah. I think, very important for us to talk about. And, and that's true. There's a lot of women who have mm-hmm. not been in that power, that situation that can handle that and it kind of brings them out that alpha tendencies and kind of turns into disrespect where in my last relationship that played a part, like it was very short, but I kind of saw like, oh, if you did have this, this power, this, you make 60, like she just started off 60, 70,000 and I wasn't really working. Like you gonna kind of look at it as like, I'm a bum because like, as a man, you can't be under your woman in society or like that's what a lot of women think but for me I'm gonna check it really quick like I'm gonna check that so fast like don't think because you're doing this or doing this like I need you me my not my whole logic is I will sleep in the car before I have anybody just disrespect me and think that they can just disrespect me that way like I don't need you to break up I'll sleep outside under some tents before I let you do that to me so Mm -hmm. It's about the man knowing how to communicate. Um, Me, that kind of, that's like a pet peeve of mine. So I kind of do have that hot streak to it. Like if I do see it, I'm a snap. 
Yeah. But me growing up and me being like getting more mature is like you got to talk to a woman back. Look, I want you to be great. Like, I don't want you to be under me. I don't want you to be whatever. If you can be above me, that's what I want. But we're not going to have you acting a certain way or making me feel less than because you make more than me. That's not what we're about to do. And once you check a woman that way, they're going to buy they're going to fall back and they're going to respect you from me. All you got to do is just demand respect. That's, that's the principle of life in anything. Like a lot of people don't demand respect. Like in corporate America, I demand respect. Or if I'm at the gym, I demand respect. You're not about to sit here and just disrespect me as an individual, because once a person see that they can disrespect you, they're going to just walk all over you. So that's, that's all men got to do is learn how to communicate. Do you think that learning how to communicate and not taking disrespect, being able to hold yourself like in check and, and hold your woman in check, do you think that's what, you know, maybe women talk about when they say, you know, a man needs to learn how to handle me and should men really be able to handle their woman? Like, is that something that a guy should be able to do? Or do you think that that's a toxic trait and really a man shouldn't be trying to handle their woman? A woman should be able to try to handle herself and then be able to work with her man. Because that's, that's, again, part of this argument that we're really trying to, you know, kind of dissect and really try to make sense of. For the mm. um, yeah, I think it's 50-50. Like, I think a woman, some <laughs> some women just do it to be toxic. Some women, like I say, really get turned on by, like, they will, they will set something up so that their man can check them. Yeah. So they can feel like that feminine side come out and they just want to see it. But some women are just really independent. Like, like I, I got a homeboy who got a girl. She's very, she's an engineer and she does well. Like I, and I tell him, I'm like, I, I love that so much that she can, if he's not as like, if he needs to be dominant, he will, but he's very respectful. But his girl, she is like, if she don't like something at a restaurant or something, she mm-hmm. gonna speak up and tell the waiter, we need this. Some women might think they just need to sit in the back and a man do it. Mm-hmm. But it's like, um, they have a perfect balance to like that. That's why I'm like, that's what men and women have to aim for is because I think you do have to check your woman because if you don't check them to answer your question, mm-hmm. if you don't check them, they will get out of pocket. And like, it's like, you have to put that foot down. Like, I don't know who you think you talking to. I don't know who you think this it is, but we're not having that here. But you have met a couple times, that couple conversation, they're gonna be like, oh, I know I can't play with this man. Mm-hmm. Like, and I had some situation with a girl, like she was like, she was like a, she was like 5'10", and she was like bigger. So like, she felt like, not like fat, but like she's like really like thick, like in a good thick. And like, we got in an argument and she thought that just cause like she never seen that side out of me. I talked about it, but she never seen it. And then we got in an argument and I like put that, put that pressure on her and then she was like, and then we talked about it like a week after she was like, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. That was really attractive. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why did it take for me to do that for you to kind of defer and kind of be like, okay, well, I can't play with him. I can't disrespect him or I can't just say anything I want. Or some women just get mad and throw temper tantrums thinking that they can just do that because they're a woman and I could pout at this and this. I'm not about to have this pout and stuff. Like, let's have a <laughs> communication. Let's talk about like some, like some grown ups. We're not about to sit here on this couch and not say nothing. And like, I know how I am. If mm-hmm. I grew up in a household that if we didn't speak, we didn't speak for two weeks. So my toxic trait is if I see that, I try to talk to myself like London stop. Because if I turn into that, we ain't going to speak. And I'm going to just act like we don't hear nothing. They're going to be like, well, now you don't want to talk to me. So you started this. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's 50, 50. You want your woman to be, you want your woman to be aggressive alpha, this and this, and you sometimes got to check them to get them in a uh, place. So you got to have a good balance to answer your questions. I'll be answering these questions super long. No, but it's all good, man. It's really a great breakdown. I think he kind of laid that out, you know, very well, in my opinion, because, you know, I think that's so much of the, the sort of contentiousness that we get with these conversations like women and men really don't have that understanding of where the other side is coming from and i get it a lot of it is you know psychological and maybe subconscious to a degree so being able to kind of see where one side is coming from and how you explain it can make sense for some people you know Um, i think for me put i I think this the way i'm what i'm about to say can kind of put a button on it I, i think for men um they put such a premium on the on the cat 
right? That it's like, I don't want to rock the boat. I don't want to risk maybe losing it. Maybe she gets angry. Maybe she don't want to give me none because I check her because maybe I, you know, cause a little bit of, maybe I put her in a place. So maybe I have a little bit of an aggressive tone with her. So I'd rather just not do nothing and let her get away with it. Just this little bit, maybe yeah. this one time and maybe, you know, it I'll, like I'll get a better outcome. I say, nah, when there is an oh. issue, you got to address it. I don't want to let it. And like, that was one of my things, like with, with women in the past, I've done like the women who, you know, like, ah, maybe I can just let it go this time. It never, it never got better. Yeah. But the ones where I was like, no, I don't, I don't care whether you want to go and try to be passive, but no, no, come back over here. We're going to talk about it. Like we need to resolve this now. And if you don't want to resolve it, then, you know, you can go ahead and we can leave each other alone. Cause for me, I don't like things just being able to sit there and brew. Like, I'm like, nah, let's go ahead, put this fire out instead of it getting out of hand. And then, you know, okay, it becomes, yeah, yeah, exactly. It gets way more volatile. So that's the thing. I think just people have to have the balance. You have to be, understand that as a man, there's a burden of performance, not just to, um, you can't want to be the leader, but then not want to lead. You see what I'm saying? You can't say, oh, she should respect me as the alpha. But then you don't want to exert that, you know, ability to check when it's needed. Now, checking her does not mean that you're just raising your voice and getting out of pocket and putting and calling her out a name. But it is that ability to stand up for yourself and, and like just simply like, hey, you're at a 10. I'm going to bring it down to a five. That's my yeah. go to. You had a 10, I'm gonna need you to or you had an eight, I'm gonna need you to bring it back down a couple of notches, Joe. Yeah. Just let's just talk to each other like adults. That's it. You don't gotta raise your voice. And if it and if okay. she raises her voice, you just say, Hey, can we address each other like adults? If that doesn't work, well then you know, you, you resolve yeah. it in another way. And of course, you might have some chippier moments where y'all yell, but it's like you gotta know who your relationship is. Like I'm mm. just cause I do sometimes I might raise my voice and I'm I'm big on not calling women out their names. Like I seen that growing up. So like I I made a point that I'm never gonna call a woman out her name. Like I might be passionate about what I'm saying and I might get a little loud, but I just always tell a woman that like, look, like um after we do have that argument, like just know when I do get loud, it doesn't mean I'm trying to disrespect you. I'm just really passionate. I'm trying to make you hear what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm not trying to really be disrespectful. So it's like, if I do come up high, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm working on that. So it's like, it's almost like whooping the kid. I mean, I know we don't like talking about that and whatever. It's like, you, if you do discipline your kid, I'm not going to just beat their ass and then just say, go sit in the corner. I'm going to tell them why and why I love them. So it's like, I'm going to tell my girl, like, I did raise my voice a little bit because I don't think you see what I see in you and like, or whatever the argument's about, like the only thing you see where we can grow and it just really irks me, but I do love you, blah, blah, blah. And I think this is how we can get better. And then once you do that, they're going to be like, they're going to calm down. They're going to be, I'm sorry. And then y'all going to be good. And then y'all going to have a good time from that. So it's like, it comes with relationships. Fighting is good for relationships. <laughs> well, yeah, fighting is good one. And then also it's like, people have because of social media since we've been since that's the theme of the episode because of social media like everybody has this image that a relationship is supposed to be smooth sailing never have no issue never have no problem never have no drama like i was talking to my coach before we got on today one of my old coaches and he told me like the real true way you can know whether you have found the right one because he's married is when you know you can go through something with your woman and like y'all can get through it or like even when you get into a relationship, like you should expect for those things to happen because that's what helps y'all grow, right? If you're a person who never has any type of conflict or no type of like issue ever emerged, like some people think that's good. He's like, that's weird. It's weird. And that just shows no growth, right? You have to have those things to kind of, you guys have to go have that back and forth and that, you know, that dynamic where you guys can go to each other about anything, right? That's what I always have said is like, relationships are work, like it is to keep something healthy, you know? It's not easy. And don't they say like through sickening and through health or something? <laughs> yeah, like, right. it, That's like, what it's supposed to be, but that ain't not. Nah. Like, people, people fall, like if, if I do this or if I get sick or if this, you might leave me. And that's my problem with relationships is like, mm. I think that's what women struggle with. Now, I think okay. that is the main thing that women struggle with is staying by their man's side. If they man was making 500,000 this year and then he just lost it all, I guarantee if we did a poll and they're not going to say it, 75 <laughs> to 80% of women is going to stay for one more year. And if you ain't got that 500,000 back next year, 
Uh, we're gonna have to start thinking about cheating or we're gonna think about leaving. So Ooh, that's that, that's where I think women struggle with. They all struggle. right, all right, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and we'll go. Why? So why do you think that is the case? Because, like I said, the theme of the dang topic today, social <laughs> media. Social media has played this part into everything. Now, this dude might have a Rolls Royce, he might have a Bentley, but he posted that on Instagram on his feed. So my, my my husband had five hundred thousand last year, and he was doing that. But now he he he's struggling. He need my help. But she don't know if that dude on the next page just written that out, faking it till you make it. He don't got he don't got five thousand dollars. He don't got five hundred dollars in his account. Mm. Like these people are so materialistic, and it's like Drake said a line. He said, "Dang, if I can remember this line," he said. Basically, he said this girl took several pictures mm-hmm. when she was like in like Italy, this and this, and saved them to make it seem like she was always on the go. Yeah. She might have been at home, but she seemed like she's on the go. Or this guy, he might wear this, just make it seem like he this and this. And it's like, we don't really have it how we say we have it. Yeah. I know when somebody, and that's why I respect a lot of, a lot of people that I talk to that just talks to me about real estate, investing. And stocks or this mutual funds. I'm like, I know the people who really got money because I'm like, we be talking about, oh, this man got these shoes. This man got this. He got this car. I'm like that, bro. Like if you really talk to some people who really know about the world and stuff, there's a lot of people lacking. And these women aren't up to game with it because it's like you go into that next dude, you don't know what the heck he got. He just, he can have nothing. And then it's like, you left your supposedly ride or die and you went with this guy because he had some more money. And it was like, dang, so all it takes for me to have money for me to get you, like, you're not really the one. That's why I struggle with finding a girl. Because I'm like, I think it's in Texas, though, honestly. To be honest with you, I think Texas uh, women struggle with this a lot. And um, I tell my homeboys, like, down south women, there's more materialistic than up north. Because me being from Michigan, there's a lot of women who aren't as materialistic than girls in Texas, at least, that I've seen. Um, I could be wrong. There's some women, there's some women who ride for you, but from what I've seen, it's especially in Houston where we're at, like, you yeah. know, we, we go out in the nightlife and stuff. And if this dude got him some, he got him some, uh, he got him a rollie or something nice, or he got him something from Icebox in Georgia or something. He got him some really iced out stuff, got him pull up in a nice car, he got a nice fit. He automatically, he 80% could close out the account. I look at women like sales now, like accounts. He didn't close out the account almost. Rather than <laughs> he didn't to talk to you, he didn't get to know you. And mm-hmm. then you ask yourself, why am I hurt? Because he, you just let him in, you let him smash, and you don't even know him. But he had the Amari exchange. He had the, he had the uh, Louis Vuittons. He had all this stuff, Balenciagas. And you thought he was cool, but it's like, that's all it takes is money these days. I'm like, that's why it takes, it takes a real man to go talk to one. That's why I like taking these challenges on because Me too. Right. I go talk to a woman and I change a whole narrative. I'm like, oh yeah, you think I'm one of these, one of these busters out here who about to tell, try to buy you something. <laughs> I ain't trying to buy you nothing, nothing. Actually, I'm trying to have you, I'm trying to have a conversation with you. Like right, we, right, I right. really want to split this check on the first day. If, if you really want to go and do the it. check, I want to, because the way these people think, I damn, think these women don't the deserve, check. God damn. they don't deserve, they don't deserve <laughs> these right now from what I'm seeing. Not all women, this ain't all women, but from the women I've seen, um, they don't all deserve for me to pay my thing. Like I got cat, I don't know, I'm real, I'm open book. I got catfish, y'all. Like I got catfish before, like this girl, like I said, that's why you go up to a woman because I was on hinge and I met her. I was hungry that day. You know, I'm 256 folks, so I'm always hungry. She was like, I want I was gonna go to Papa Do's with my girls, but they canceled. I was like, sure, I'm hungry. I've been thinking about Papa Do's seafood platter for about a month now. So let's go. We go. And she's like, I'm here. I look at her. I'm like, are you sure that's you that I saw on Hinge? I didn't say that, but I'm thinking that. So we talking. I'm like, there ain't no way this girl is here. So she's talking about, I want the fondue with cheese. I'm like, we don't need no fondue with cheese. We need to just get this over with. And then she got her meal. I got my meal. 
But it's like, to me, it's like, you just played me. My total was $120 after the tip. And it's like, I can do it, but it's like, I'm not, I just wasted $120 on somebody I'm never going to talk to again. So I just cut down on how I think about doing that stuff with women. And it's, I know I rambled on, but this is a touchy subject for me, at least. <laughs> Especially when you're out here getting catfished on his, bro. I'll be trying to tell you about that dang social media, online dating. Sh- but <laughs> anyway, I'll put a bow on it, though. So from what, just, from what you just talked about, I think the problem is that <sighs> women fall for the illusion that men present, especially with some of the things that they buy present right. themselves with like the cars like the watches like the jewelry like the rollies like the balenci's and the grass ain't always green on the other side shout out to chris brown so don't fall for the illusion and think you know maybe i could step one foot out you never know what really that person is about unless you you know get to know them but you really should try to rival who you with and try to build that up then instead of trying to look elsewhere <laughs> sad world like then you know it's true because these people wouldn't be having these gold digger videos if they weren't true you you on this gold digger video shit again bro man i'm telling you i need to do the if i swear to god if i ever get super rich i will be doing those videos on youtube i'm coming in with some baggy clothes i'm cutting up my shirt i'm doing i'm i'm gonna figure out how to have some fake teeth or something fake teeth i'm gonna have no teeth in my mouth and i'm going to have and i'm going to walk up to a girl and really try to get her she's gonna say no thank you and i'm gonna say wow i want to take you on a date she's gonna say where i'm gonna say i'm gonna say like denny's or something like that i'm gonna just play with her and she's gonna say no and I'm not even going to try to talk to her. I'm not going to try to make it scripted. I'm going to really go up to a girl and see if that works. And then I'm just going to go get in my Bentley and I'm going to drive by her and say, you just messed up. Like, that's the problem with y'all women. Like, I just want to have a genuine conversation with you and get to know you as a lady. But you over here thinking about, I guess you got to be attracted to that guy. Don't get me wrong. You got to be attracted to him. But <laughs> dang, don't just curve me off. Like, don't just blow me off because of that. So I'm definitely going to do that. Yes, I'm on that topic. So. I understand, bro. Go ahead, let it out, bro. I understand. Yeah, so that's you be trying to talk to me about these social media day naps, but I mean, like I said, I'm not going up to no woman because they're disrespectful. All right. Well, you you said that you had some questions that you wanted to kind of bounce back. So, what you got, man? Um, my questions I was going to ask throughout the thing, but uh, it's like, do you? Do you think that, um, no, I don't want to go. That's a good, I don't know. I, I mean, it's right. Don't get us canceled, bro. We just started this partnership, bro. Do not get us canceled. Well, I mean, F it, but I'm just. <laughs> like, do you think that, what standards do you think women should have when it comes to men? Like, how do you think men should approach themselves when going up to a woman like do you think what type of Hmm. resume do you think a man has to have to get these women nowadays since they don't want nobody from walmart (laughs) (laughs) all right uh okay i'll say this as a man the things you should factor in is your location your geography so if you live in a big city like if you're out living in Miami, you have to understand the, the surroundings you're going to be around, like, and the type of men that live there, the type of women that live there, right? If you live up north where, you know, people don't really have as much, don't earn as much, maybe it's a little bit easier to uh, have a family to find an attractive woman who's not all over. I mean, it's the, the dating marketplace is global. So, I mean, any woman can get flown out, but it's still a matter of it's chancing and probability right? right so i think first thing is just take in your geography where you are located like a place like houston yeah it's some ballers out here i mean and houston's really not as bad as like a miami or california but still you're gonna have to deal with more risks so i say take that into account and then like see where you are you know am i in shape how much money do I make? Because money is a factor. It does matter. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say that money doesn't. It does. And then lastly, just what are my insecurities and have I worked on them? Right. That's what you should be thinking about as a man. And then, you know, just if you see a woman who you're attracted to, pull up, like 
that's it. It's just a matter of pick up your nuts and go pull up, man. Because if she rejects you, okay, so what? The worst thing she could say is no. She says no, okay. All right, nice to meet you. Take it as a compliment. Move on with your life, bro. Billions of women in the world. Um, as far as women, I just would say don't go out dating a man who you're not attracted to in the first place because you're setting yourself up for failure. You're not going to take him seriously, and then you're going to create a spiteful vent. Like, not every guy is going to be a London or me to a lesser degree where it's like, okay, I get it. You're not attracted to me. I'm going to move on. Like, some guys really are vindictive and will take it personally right. right so you lessen the top level of toxic man you gonna be dating by n- not picking and dealing and kind of uh playing a man who you're not attracted to one does he have a job that's stable right is he generous with his money because if if he's balling and has a lot of bread but he's a frugal guy who's not willing to invest in you he's not willing to share with you then really okay what what's the value of that you get to say that you date a rich man but he's not really breaking you off anything that's really what he usually is though huh that's really what he usually is though yeah true but i think um most women's mistake is they think, well, I can change him or I can convince him to do more or give me more. I think that's the mistake rather than saying this, like this man is who he is. I, I see this a lot with marriage, right? I can date a man and maybe I can convince him to marry me or I can ultimate him into marrying me when right. he's already established he's not a marriage type, right? If you know as a woman, I want to be married now, right? I'm at that age, I've dated, I've done that whole thing. I'm ready to be married. And the guy is telling you, I'm not ready to be married. I'm not ready to have kids. Believe them. And then, like, let that be what it is. Either you decide, okay, I'm going to continue dating him. Maybe you'll change his mind. And then give yourself a time limit. I won't date him for more than one year or six months or whatever the time frame. Right? But I just say believe people whenever they show you who they are for a man or a woman. Believe a woman. She says, eh, you know, I'm not attracted or I'm not feeling you. Or if she's just playing you along and you're really wanting to do more with her okay you got to peace out right have the abundance about yourself to peace out and then if you're a woman this guy's not wanting to marry you or this guy's not really wanting to invest in you then respect yourself enough to peace out and find something else and we kind of live in this i guess society where i don't know if that was a word back then uh simp simping yeah. you think yes. do yes. you think that a woman has to kind of get their male or their significant other as a male to kind of be, I guess, simpish to kind of have them be in that relationship a hundred percent, or do you think you have a balance? I want to understand the question a little bit better. So when you ask, do I think so a, woman a lot of have a lot of women thinks that for a man to be 100% loyal, they have to like that woman more, which I don't agree, but I think a lot of women believe that the man has to like a lot of, has to like the woman more, but like, do you think the woman has to kind of bring out that simp mentality for a man for them to get there? Or do you think a man can be like, I can, I don't have to always be a simp for me to be 100% loyal? No, I disagree with that. I think the word isn't simp, the word is empathy. Both men and women have to, my dad and I had this conversation. You have to find a person who has empathy for you. Can they be able to step into your shoes and understand where you're coming from? Like, okay, well, you know, I'm dating this person. This person's my girlfriend, my wife. So maybe she's gone out to work all day. She, she could be tired. So maybe she doesn't have the energy to cook. So it doesn't behoove me to demand a meal when she could have had a long day at work. Maybe we can eat out. Maybe I can cook as a man. Like that's not you pandering to her. That's you respecting her commitment and her role, like in her commitment and her thing that she has going on as a woman. You understand that, well, okay, maybe I should, like my husband goes out, he works hard, right? I picked a hard working a good man. So maybe mm, I was off from work today. Maybe he would like to have something, you know, nice done. Maybe he would like a home cooked meal. Maybe he would like it if I just did some little active service for him, right? I think many people's 
love language these days is active service or qual- or like quality time, maybe even gifts, yeah. depending on like know your person and just have empathy for them. If you have empathy, I think people would be able to not be so gung ho and it's my way or no way. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think that's the issue. Not that you have to be a simp, but you have to have empathy for your partner. If you have empathy, I think you can have um, healthier relationships these days. But so many people get, because of the social media, tying it back together. So many people get told, know your worth and don't settle. So therefore, they think not settling means I have to have everything 100% my way or no way. Right. I think you made a good point about just having empathy. Like, I kind of don't like the word simp because, like, it's just me kind of caring about my partner. And it's like, I have empathy to kind of know that she had a long day or she had this. She's been on her feet all day. Why should I expect her to like come home and like cook and like whatever? And like, that's why I think the old ways and the new ways kind of, we can get better at with new ways. Like just cause she was working all day or on her feet and I'm home or if I was at home early, let me cook or let me go pick up, pick up something really quick so we can just call it a day and just go, go to sleep and kind of make the new day. So I think you emphasizing on that empathy message was definitely key. So I don't think there's no such thing as this man is being a simp. Mm-hmm. He's being a respectful gentleman and knowing who he has in his corner. So it gets to the level of simp, if we want to use that word, when the man does what he's supposed to do or he does those things and the woman is inconsiderate of him. Yeah. Then okay, it's like, okay, bro, you simping a little too much. Right. <laughs> that's what that's where I think the fine line is. There's always a fine line, right? Like, all right, if your woman is not respecting you, but you're doing everything then you should sure. yeah exactly okay. that's yeah fair. that's that's where the line is drawn right if you know that you're like i like i said last week if you're putting in 100 and your partner is only putting in 15 you're with the wrong partner everybody sure. should be given 100 percent in whatever role that they have established that's and fair. you should have the empathy to understand that hey my partner is giving it their all they're trying so maybe i should understand and not be so bullish on they have to do everything i did like okay i understand you had a long day i understand you're working hard i understand maybe you had this go on today maybe you had a tough day at work let me just try to do something to ease the load ease the tension you know what i'm saying and people just need to work together and understand each other hmm look at obi with all these nice gems for y'all um i'm i don't have any more questions you kind of just sparked it away i'm just the man who tries to I'm a guy who likes to learn. I'm a guy who likes to dissect problems, bring them to light, talk about them, and try to come up with solutions. I'm not here to say that one side is right, one side is wrong. I don't like, to me, there's no right or wrong. Let me not say that. There's, I don't have a, I can't not see where anybody's coming from, from what whatever angle, right? Like a woman who does OF woman who does stripping, a woman who's into law, a woman who's a doctor, a woman who's a boss, a woman who's in, all those things. It's like, that's the path you chose. Do you understand the consequences of that? Same thing for a guy. You're a guy, you decide you want to be out of shape. You want to be in shape. You want to have a high earning career. Or you don't. Do you understand the consequences that come with all of those decisions? That's all I'm about. Understand the, the, the consequences of your decisions in life, because that's all it's about. And don't complain find solutions and that's the t for the ass tell them Obi. hear me anyway i think we, we can wrap this up um but definitely i think great conversation today man i think we were able to get through a lot I, I hopefully you know somebody's able to hear this and it'll be able to help them kind of see the lighter be able to see where one side is coming from because i think you definitely broke down some really good points and i think we were able to kind of bring some great things to light but just to put a bow on the episode for today for this week What's your take home message, man? Um, my take home message would be stop listening to social media. Social media can't dictate. No, well, it can. Um, just stop listening to social media and stop. They don't know everything. Everybody has a different path. Like Obi says, just because this person doing this, just because this person doing that, that does not mean that you have to take the same path. You can go a different path and still end up at the top. So everybody got a different process. Everybody got a different way. Do your own way. Get to the top. Find your husband. Find your wife. Get your own job. Do this. And worry about yourself. Mm, there it is. 
All right, that's a wrap for Four Inside Podcast. This has been your host, Mike Obi. And it's your boy, London Ogletree, giving you all the gems every day. So you can catch this episode on all your listening platforms as well as YouTube and the anchor.fm platform. Much love. I took some risks, some people probably won't. Pass our grace before the fruits of all my labor. Hard to live and know you sick. I'd rather be with my creator. Think the time's up. I hit the stool and got my rhymes.